I'll give you some steps in discovering this tree. Three simple steps in finding this tree. Step number one, determine your unique trap. And what I'll be requesting you to do tonight is to think critically about your talents, your resources, your abilities, and your passions. Talents are God-given natural abilities. David Rudisha is an athlete, but he has to practice for him to win 800 meters. But some of us say, even if we practice day in, day out, we will never win that race, correct? Fortunately for me, I discovered when I was informed to, if I ever sing a song, everybody will run away. <laughs> so I never try. Have you ever seen some people, for example, in the field of music, they sing at you, God, why don't you speak to some people? Why can't you be clear? You just feel like, can this guy sit down? I once met a speaker somewhere, and I had to sit down anyway because I was a parent in that school, and this guy was the guest speaker. And I said, oh my God, why wouldn't you tell him where he belongs? <laughs> have, you ever, have you ever endured a pastor's preaching? You are there and wondering, what time is the sermon? In fact, you wonder why it's given an hour. It should be given 15 minutes because anything beyond that. You know what I'm saying? Do you know there are people who really don't know what they are not good at? And you wonder, do they have friends? Do they have honest friends? Seriously? <laughs> then, then you realize there are some resources God has given each one of us. For example, your skin type was wired for Africa. And there are some things if you try to do, you know I have seen some Africans trying to behave like whites. You try to swim at night when it's cold. Utakufa. <laughs> then Zungu was wired for Baridi. Don't, don't, don't try to fake it. Let them swim alone. <laughs> Trust me, you are not wired for that. You are wired for the tropics. You can bear hot sun, but you can't bear fridge. <laughs> so God positioned us where we are for our purpose. Abilities are skills that we have acquired along the way. Every certificate you have along the way, the dots will connect someday. There is nothing you learned by accident. God choreographed it all behind the scenes. And then finally, your passions, your deepest zeal, your deepest drive. So I'll be requesting in a short while to identify your talents, to calculate the resources God has given you. They could be public resources or private resources, to list down your abilities. Abilities I'm talking, maybe you're an accountant in our midst, an architect, a doctor. Maybe you're listening to me, you have majored in marketing or in finance, a curious science. I know we have different careers here. Let, let me just test. Let me just test. Let me just test. I, I hope you'll not be too shy. How many marketers are in our midst? Marketers. Quite many. That's what I'm talking about. Hearts down. Don't shy. Any doctor in our midst? Medical. A heart there. Where do you look at Subua Shule? The A girl. Architects in our midst? Quite a heart. And by the way, you never know who will network with you. All engineers make electrical, electronic, megatronic, whatever. <laughs> engineers in our midst, please lift up your hands. Thank you very much. All finance, finance accounts, actuarial sons, hands up. Kenya is very necessary to have a lot of finance people. <laughs> Economists in our midst. All right. How many priests are in our midst? Priests. Wow, we have many priests. Oh my God. Oh, wow, 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 wow. Today to come out to October. <laughs> lecturers, I can see some lecturers here. A couple of them I know. How about the Lecturers in October. <laughs> Dr. Solomon, I can see you. And I know there are many other careers. Sorry if I didn't mention yours. I know we are so many here. Then your passion, the greatest drive. Oh no, I can't finish the meeting without asking about lawyers. One day they might help me in a court of law. <laughs> lawyers! <laughs> Lawyers in our midst. <laughs> These are the people who will go to heaven after everyone else. <laughs> Close examine your list. The talents, resources, abilities, and passions. I'll be asking you to check the theme in all the four. I'll give you a personal illustration. And the question we'll be asking you today, do you have the talent for it? Do you have the resources for it? Do you have the abilities, that's the skills? Do you have the passion for it? 
Then finally, select that one thing that truly rocks and focus all your skills on this one thing, which I'm calling my tree. Now, I'll give you a personal illustration, and then I'll give you a moment to try to work out your trap. To make it easier for us, let me give you an example. I know there could be many models. This is the simplest model. If you follow what I'm going to teach, this is the simplest model for unveiling your purpose. And for those of you who are not members of Sense One One Life Club, that model I'm describing is in this book called My Life Journey. This book has 10 lessons. One of the lessons is just how to discover your purpose in life. It takes you through those models, the trap model. Let's try it with an example. I'll give you my trap. T for talent, R for resources, A for abilities, and P for passions. And in this particular example, I just outlined three of my talents. Talents are God-given. One is public speaking, two is writing, and three is leadership. I published very many books. I wouldn't even encourage you to pick all of them tonight. But I've discovered my talent in, pub, in writing way back in high school. Because everything God has given you is for your purpose. The odds are high you're here because you either read my article or you listen to my YouTube videos. And the truth is this. If you ever sing and nobody buys your music, you're not talented. Please accept it. <laughs> if only your natural market, good friends, neighbors buy your music, out in the open market nobody can buy. You know, the others are sympathizers. If, you, if you're good at something, someone will notice it. That is the truth. And don't test whether you're good some, at something with the people near you. Test it in the open market. In terms of the resources, I, again, I want to identify just three of them. One is the networks. I think God has given me networks, virtually in every continent. God has given us some capital to do this job. When he started since One One Life Club four years ago, at Lake Origin, say we, we, we paid it for it for half a year. And God gives us these resources for our purpose and a personal brand. But the thing is this, even if you don't have a brand that is known right now, you can start this January and build a brand. If you are called to do like what I'm doing, you don't have to expect people to flock the way they flocked, but start and you build that brand. If I look at the skills God has given me, these are acquired. Skills are acquired. That's why I'm calling them abilities. One of them is teaching, lecturing. The other one is research. And I do this a lot of time. I'm always working on research. And the other one is project management. And these are acquired. They are acquired skills. They're not inherent. Finally, and the most critical, is what I call passions. I have many passions. The three most critical for me, transforming lives, influencing society, and transferring knowledge. When I was doing the Young Adults Conference here on 15th of December, as I was listening to the feedback and the testimonies from the young adults who were in this particular hall, it moved me to tears. Even today, as I was speaking to you, many times I had to control myself. Because I'm so desperately moved by seeing this transfer of knowledge and people being transformed. One of the ladies seated here, who I can see her right here. She attended my class, 12 hours of transformation. A year later, she called me. She was struggling her life seriously. And she told me, Doc, I want you to pray over my car, dedicate it, a new car. A lady who was seriously struggling. Another lady who is seated very near me right here. Uh, that one I think I have her permission to mention, Beatrice. She went through this topic of purpose. We were with her at the Great River Nile. We are going through this cruise. And when we came back, she launched a rehab center at Kikuyu. I went to visit that place. It was already packed with the patients. Beatrice didn't like something to do. PhD holder, director of the TSC, but she connected with her purpose at the Great River Nile. When I was speaking in the UK, Two years ago, one guy connected with his purpose. His name is Sam. He came here, he's a Kenyan who lived there for many years. He bought a piece of land, Limuru Road, and in a record eight months, put up a full-fledged hospital with three wards, St. Joel, St. Joel Community Hospital. I can give you many testimonies. We can't finish them today. Even right here, I can see many faces. And in fact, since today's purpose was just to trigger you, to begin the quest to look for your purpose. 
I want to urge you to come for our 12 hours of transformation. We sit together for 12 hours. There is no way tonight in a two-hour speech you will connect with your God-given purpose. I can share with you testimony by testimony by testimony of people who connected with your purpose in life. They don't come because they're desperate. You know, there are a lot of people who think people who go for self-development are desperate. In fact, one lady flew from Moy University. She's the dean H HRD from Moy University. She flew from Eldora to attend those classes. The youth fat CEO flew from Mombasa to attend those classes. People don't come here because they have nothing to do, but because they want to connect with something bigger. I told you Nelson Mandela was a lawyer, but he connected with something bigger. I say this with humility, with a lot of humility, Dr. Solomon is my witness. I was the first guy to graduate in project management in Kenya. He graduated after me, and I say this with a lot of humility, with the same. And I say this, but I connected with something else. It doesn't mean what I'm doing is better than teaching project management, no. But it only means I connected with my purpose. Now, I've given you a personal example. I'm going to walk around. I'd like you to try to work on your trap. You might not get it right immediately, but I'd like you to try. Identify three of your talents, three resources God has given you. It could be a car you have, could be access to a library, could be books you have, could be networks, could be friends. Then abilities, each one of you has some skills you have acquired in school, in college, and then try to identify your passion. What moves you? Some of you are moved by corruption in Kenya. <laughs> some of you, what moves you is people dumping garbage in our streets. When you see a woman in a car throwing a soil diaper, it cuts your heart. Others here are never moved. They can stay in a place which is full of uchafu. Some of us are moved by children. If you hear a child cry, you connect with them immediately. You know, when our kids were little, Master used to tell me they cried that I never had. Even my own children, I never had them cry at night. I shouldn't say that in public. But some people are moved by a child crying. And then, don't, don't get irritated with me. We are moved by different things. Some people connect with cooking. Some people here, if you tell them to cook, Lord, when are you taking me home? What moves you? That's what I'm calling passions. Sir Edmund Hillary was moved by mountains. He was the first guy to climb the Everest. Do we have a man here in the hall by the name Dr. Azimio Maina? Is he in the hall? Azimio Maina. He's moved by mountains. He likes hiking throughout. What connects with you at your heart level? That's what I'm calling passions. So I'm going to walk around and to see what you're writing. Deal? If you are unable to write, you need to be in that class before seven. Try to identify, try to identify. Apologies for those who are standing. One day we will buy this tower. Amen. If you are 60 years of age, you are just beginning life, identify this purpose. Even if it's on your phone, please don't feel guilty. Write on your phone book if you can. Assist your neighbor. Ask them a few questions to help them discover their talents. <laughs> How many are struggling to identify their talents? Don't shy. How many are struggling? Quite many, yeah. Thank you for being honest. Passions. How many are struggling to identify their passions? At least you shouldn't struggle identifying your abilities and your resources. Now, Granted, sometimes we confuse passions with interests. And I want to give you that difference and close the meeting, then pick some of your questions. Now, the first difference is that passions are inborn and talents are developed. You can be talented in singing, but you have to be deliberate in learning the keyboard or the guitar. You have to be deliberate. You have to develop it. For the priests in our midst, this is a calling within them. Pastoral work is a calling. Running a business is a decision you make. It's something you develop. And you can change from one business to another, depending on many dynamics in macroeconomics. That's why you have to have discipline to stay the course. Secondly, passions are lifelong, or interest values. They keep changing. Passion drives you your entire life. But an area of interest can keep on changing with tides. 
with circumstances. Thirdly, passion aligns with your personality. We teach a lot here about personality types. And you can even watch our videos on the same on YouTube. In fact, if there's only one video you can watch this January, I beseech you to watch my video on speak things into existence. Just listen to it and start making proclamations. It's a two hour video, but if you can create that time, it might save a lot in the course of your year. Interest is a question of exposure. For example, if honestly you're listening to me here and you're looking forward to start a business or you're in business, then what you need mainly is exposure. Because perhaps the way you're doing things here, they're done differently in China. You might see opportunities you've never seen before. I'm pursuing an area of passion. But there are people here I know who are in business, and the kind of business they do, what they require time and again is exposure because of the way things are changing. I wrote, I wrote a little book called Blue Sky, which has two sections. The only book I've done in full color. And the first part in Blue Sky strategy is about disruption. The whole concept of disruption. Because never before in the history of mankind have every industry been disrupted this much. And the second part about it is about discovering your gift and linking that gift with your interest. Then passions flow naturally, while interests you have to be deliberate. To stay the course, you have to be deliberate. To keep cutting the same tree, you have to be deliberate. It doesn't flow naturally.